It's time for Al McGordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Light rain and mixed precipitation is expected today into tomorrow from the mid-Mississippi Valley through the northeast as the trough pivots east. On the west coast, a cold front will bring light to moderate rainfall and rough surf from Washington into California with mixed precipitation into the Cascades and Sierras today into tomorrow. Closer to home, weather conditions will remain dry and seasonably cool. No hazardous weather is expected at this time. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. You no doubt remember the death of Marla Thomas, the Alamogordo woman stabbed in the chest following a Halloween party, and she later died from those injuries. Police found a video, later released by KOB, on the suspect's phone that recorded everything. Arnulfo Flores told police that she slipped and fell on a sword. Video also shows Flora starting to record the argument. It shows the argument, the struggle, and then the stabbing happened around 11 p.m. When Flores realized that she was injured, he could be heard suggesting that he would take his own life until he saw she was alive. I'm going to call the cops, baby. I will call the ambulance. Do I need to call the ambulance? Tell me. Tell me. In the video, Thomas tells Flores to not call the police after he repeatedly asks her what to do. Do you want me to call the cops? No. I need you to help. You know you're not that bad, dude. Flores did not call the police until 7.30 the next morning, nearly eight hours after the incident. Officers responding to the scene tried to ask Flores what happened, but he simply wouldn't say. We were both drinking, dude. Okay. You were both drinking, and then what? She can tell you. Flores later told police that it was an accident and that Thomas had slipped and fell. Investigators found a bloody sword at the scene and signs that someone tried to clean up the blood spill. Thomas later died at the hospital after she was revived twice. Flores has been charged with her murder and tampering with evidence. A judge has ruled that Flores will remain in jail until a possible trial. His next court date is scheduled for next month. A year ago, the village of Tularosa announced that they had been awarded the funds requested to build a splash pad and promised as coming in 2023. Now, as of 2023 comes to a close, there is no splash pad in Tularosa. The village posted on Facebook that when the splash pad was announced, they had just received the award letter confirming they had received the grant. The big question? We all know it doesn't take this long to build a splash pad. Where's the money? The Facebook post states that updates are given at regular monthly meetings, and the village invites citizens to attend those meetings to get the information and progress reports. What the village doesn't do anymore is stream these meetings to allow for people to go back and review the information shared. What we do have is Mayor-elect Debbie Cooksey. When they gave us the money, the specs were just a splash pad with a fence around it. Now they want us to do bathrooms. So we're, we're redesigning, we're having to redesign our whole thing to include the bathrooms. Debbie also told me the village meetings will be streamed once again after she takes office. We uh, got our sound and our video system approved and it will be put in hopefully by the middle of January. You can hear the interview in its entirety on the Crazy Radio YouTube channel. Elizabeth Winter Road is hosting a Meet the Candidates event in Chaparral. We have a vet Harold coming out to speak, Jim Townsend, myself, too. I'm a retired teacher and I haven't won anything at this point, but I did well enough that I was encouraged to try again. Rebecca Dow, who ran for the governor, Mark B. He's running for a senatorial candidate. Jason Estrada, he's more of a local candidate. And Cheryl, the young who is running for the county clerk. The event is free and is going to be held at the Iglesia Cristiana Sedna de Alabanza in Chaparral on January 6th from 1 to 3. You can hear this interview in its entirety on the Crazy Radio YouTube channel. The Alamogordo Chess Club meets every Monday. More now from Keith Raymond. The Alamogordo Chess Club weekly meetings are at Plateau Espresso, Mondays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's casual chess. Pair up with whomever is available, and there are no membership requirements or fees. Just show up with a board and a set and play. All are welcome. The club is meeting on January the 1st from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you have any questions, please contact Matt Grinberg at 575-415-3628. For Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio, I'm Keith Raymond. And today being Friday, we get to have a cat chat from Kitty City NM. Happy Meow Year. 
Hi, this is Kathy Denton with Kitty City NM, and welcome to the last edition of the 2023 Cat Chat. Today, I would like to feature two sweet kitties that sometimes get overlooked. One of these cats is Mikey. Mikey is a two-year-old gray male tabby with short fur. Mikey is a delightful cat with lots of personality. He is vocal and friendly and just loves attention from anyone who enters his room. Mikey loves every human he meets, and he loves their lives. Mikey also likes other cats. He likes it! Hey, Mikey! Mikey had been surrendered to Alamogordo Animal Control. When the Kitty City staff saw what a friendly and outgoing cat Mikey was, they immediately took him and brought him back to Kitty City. Shortly after his arrival at Kitty City, Mikey was diagnosed with a sensitive tummy. Our vet recommended that Mikey should begin and remain on a permanent sensitive stomach diet. Since starting on this new diet, Mikey has been doing very well. As long as he remains on the special foods, he will be fine. Mikey has been neutered, microchipped, and is current on all his shots and rabies certificates. Are you that special forever friend to give Mikey a new home? Our other featured kitty is Princeton, who is a one and a half year old domestic short haired black cat. Princeton came to Kitty City from the Humane Society of El Paso, and this lucky boy was brought to Kitty City for adoption. Princeton is a sweet and lovable cat, very friendly and gentle. However, Princeton does have a medical condition. He is prone to urinary tract infections and must be on a special food diet for the rest of his life. Just like Mikey, Princeton is doing well on his special diet. Princeton is a very happy, healthy, and playful guy. He has been neutered and microchipped by his previous owner. Come see Mikey and Princeton and all the great cats at Kitty City NM at 56 Stanley Branch Road or visit our website at www.kittycitynm.com and see the bios and the pictures of all our awesome cats. Happy Meow Year! Tomorrow, Saturday, December 30th, Kitty City will not be at the White Sands Mall for an adoption event. We will begin the new year with an adoption event on Saturday, January 6th at the White Sands Mall from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. However, Kitty City will be open tomorrow, December 30th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 56 Stanley Ranch Road. Alamogordo Animal Control will also be open on Saturday, December 30th from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Please come by and find your forever friend at Kitty City or at Alamogordo Animal Control. This has been this week's edition of Cat Chat. I am Kathy Denton, wishing you a happy meow year. We will talk with you next week from Kitty City NM. Kitty City and you. No one loves them better. News from around the state in just a moment. You're listening to Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. AlamogordoTownNews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you, and we bring it to you directly. Plus, local sports, cultural arts, and events. Online, AlamogordoTownNews.com. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. Plus, with its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. The city of Clovis is investigating why the tornado sirens unexpectedly went off. The emergency management office activated the siren on Wednesday at 4 as part of a routine test. But it sounded again 75 minutes later. The city is currently examining the system to see what may have caused that activation. The Albuquerque Police Department has recently regained control to investigate their own incidents regarding use of force. Albuquerque Police Chief Harold Medina spoke with KOAT. The Albuquerque Police Department has come a long way in trust, transparency, and actually uh, properly investigating uses of force and getting that information out to the public. This dates back to 2014 when the Department of Justice began stepping in to make sure APD was using force appropriately. They had received reports that the department was using force excessively. It's our position, Department of Justice's position, is that this will help the officers be safer in doing their jobs. In 2014, Damon Martinez, then the U.S. Attorney for New Mexico. Soon-to-be Albuquerque City Councilor 
Dan Champagne, believes Albuquerque residents are also ready for their officers to do their jobs fully. They're ready for their police department to do their job again. Their objective is to fix the department or make it better, and yet it seems like crime has gotten worse since they've been here. However, Medina does say some good news has come from this mission. We now have a review of our shootings every six months to see what the current trends are, and that's something that we never did before as a department. Champagne and Medina both agree that there is always improvements to be made. The department plans on sharing information in January on all incidents where the use of force was reported from July through December 2023. A vehicle was seen speeding while swerving in and out of traffic. Once the car came to a stop, the New Mexico State Police officer says 24-year-old Michael Tenorio swapped seats with a 15-year-old passenger. What's going on? Nothing. Do you think I'm dumb? No. I saw the whole thing. What are you talking about? Why did you switch? We didn't switch. I already know. I'm not even going to ask you because I already know. I saw driving. It's on my dash cam. No, he was driving. As soon as I hit the light bar, I saw your big old head jump over the seat, and I saw his head jump over the center console. The teenager seemed to be much more cooperative. I saw the entire thing. Okay. Why'd you jump over? I was scared. The officer said he could smell alcohol on Tenorio's breath. How much have you had to drink today? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all, sir. Why can I smell it on you? I don't know. Easy fix. Let's do some field sobriety tests. I need to run you through some tests. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to. You're not going to comply? No. At all? I'm not going to do them. Why is that? Because I don't want to. Tenorio was arrested on several charges, including aggravated DWI and child abuse. What's worse is that Tenorio has been convicted of DWI three times before. His car currently has an interlock device. The teen told officers that Tenorio made him blow into it in order to start the car. Tenorio has been released from jail pending trial and might be drinking and driving as we speak since he obviously has learned absolutely nothing. New Mexico unemployment continues to loom over the land of enchantment, but there is hope for 2024. Representatives with the Department of Workforce Solutions state there are a lot of job openings to fill. This includes thousands of jobs added this year in various industries. Currently, it's claimed there are more jobs than people looking for work. Officials say things may change in the new year. Construction jobs are up considerably, so it grew um, by about 10,600 jobs over last year. Um, also, we're seeing an increase in manufacturing jobs, in private education, and in the healthcare sector. And uh, also good news, we're seeing an increase in state government jobs, which had never really recovered from the pandemic. Less government employees is always a good thing. That was Sarita Nair a secretary of the Department of Workforce Solutions speaking with KOB. While more jobs is positive, there have been some layoffs this year, and the unemployment rate actually ticked up in New Mexico. When we see the unemployment rate tick up, combined with the fact that we're adding jobs, so we've added 18,800 jobs since this time last year, that means that what's most likely happening is more people are coming off the bench and looking for a job. In November of this year, New Mexico's unemployment rate was 3.9 percent, which is above the national average. Sports and weather are next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, it just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are 30 games for New Mexico girls basketball today and 37 games for New Mexico varsity basketball, all part of tournament action. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Mostly clear tonight, mostly sunny tomorrow. Your high today in the basin, 53, low tonight, 29, high tomorrow, 54 degrees. In Cloudcroft, Sunny today, mostly clear tonight, partly sunny tomorrow. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 39. Wind chill is going to make it feel like it's 16. Low tonight of 21. Wind chill is going to make it feel like it's 17. High tomorrow of 40. Wind chill is going to make it feel like it's 20 degrees. Don't forget about your pets, pipes, and plants. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and you can learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting KALHradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. 
Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way you too can remain informed of the goings on in the Tularosa Basin. Well, that concludes this Friday edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.